Hi, this is Elliot from EO Nutrition. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at health condition called adrenal fatigue. So have you been diagnosed with adrenal fatigue or adrenal exhaustion? Have you been given a bunch of supplements which have been designed to support the adrenals, so to speak, yet you haven't really seen much benefit? Well, this might actually be because what is typically referred to as adrenal fatigue likely has nothing to do with the adrenal glands. So adrenal fatigue is one of those common buzzwords at the moment, and it's used heavily in natural medicine and in functional medicine circles. Let's take a look at what is said to be adrenal fatigue. Someone may have fatigue, insomnia, depression, low libido, um, poor quality sleep, um, menstrual irregular irregularities, diarrhea, constipation. So as you can see, there are lots of different symptoms involved in this. But before we start to look into the details a bit further, let's look at the history of how this term came to come about in the first place. So the term adrenal fatigue was coined by Dr. James Wilson, um, and I believe he was a, a chiropractor, building upon the work of pioneers in the field of stress physiology, including Hans Selye. And so since then, a whole host of books have been published on this topic. And a simple Google search brings up over 403,000 results. Now, according to Dr. Wilson, adrenal fatigue is a group of related signs and symptoms, or a syndrome, which results when the adrenal glands function below the necessary level. Adrenal fatigue is produced when your adrenal glands cannot adequately meet the demands of stress. So now, before we pick this apart, we need to cover some basics. And first, we're gonna need to ask the question, what do the adrenal glands actually do? The adrenal glands are small glands located on the top of the kidneys. These are responsible for the production and release of a variety of steroid hormones. This is including the stress hormone cortisol. They produce adrenaline, otherwise known as epinephrine, and to some extent, they also produce noradrenaline, otherwise known as norepinephrine. So these hormones that are produced by the adrenal glands are involved in a wide variety of regulatory processes. So they have an influence on blood glucose control. They can regulate the immune system, the immune cells and inflammation. They can act to mobilize energy and increase certain types of metabolism, okay? But these hormones, uh, the, the adrenaline, nor noradrenaline and cortisol, are critical components of the physiological stress response. So a stressor is any event or influence which is basically disrupting the balance or disrupting the homeostasis in the body, okay? And the way that the body reacts to this is actually to initiate the stress response. And this involves a cascade of events which is designed to facilitate the adaptation. So allow your body to adapt to some kind of adverse conditions. This whole thing is actually to allow us to survive. Okay, so it's essential for us to stay alive. Now the stress response is coordinated by an axis running from the brain down to the adrenal glands, and this is called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Okay, so when the system detects some kind of a stressor or imbalance, then through this axis, what we are essentially going to do is activate the release of the stress hormones. And this means cortisol and this means adrenaline among many others. And it's important to note here that these hormones are integral for our daily function. Okay, it's not simply limited to only stressful conditions. And so the hormone cortisol is secreted by the adrenal glands and begins to circulate in the blood. One of the effects of cortisol is to essentially break down muscle tissue into its constituent amino acids and release them into the blood. And then they get to the liver and through a process called gluconeogenesis, we can synthesize glucose. The purpose of this is essentially to provide the body with extra glucose 
in the face of a stressor. For example, if you need to run away from a tiger, for instance, then you're gonna need some energy to do that. You're gonna need fast energy. And so cortisol is essentially mobilizing that extra energy to provide you with the extra support that you might need when you are um, under, th uh, under some kind of threat. Now, because it breaks things down, this makes it a catabolic hormone. And so circulating cortisol in high amounts is gonna prefer preferentially break down the gut lining, the skeletal muscle, and also some other, other tissues. Cortisol is particularly destructive to the brain when it is left unopposed. So as a counteractive measure, the adrenal glands also release another type of hormone abbreviated as DHEA. And DHEA is going to protect against some of the destructive effects of cortisol. Now that we know what the adrenal glands do and how they are involved in the stress response, let's start looking at what is said to happen in adrenal fatigue. Popular models of adrenal fatigue, this idea that the adrenal glands, when there is any kind of chronic stressor, that the adrenal glands can no longer cope and actually are unable to produce enough cortisol to meet the demand. Well, this is said to occur in several different stages. So initially, exposure to some kind of intense period of stress is going to cause a state of hyperreactivity. So this means constantly or persistently high levels of cortisol. And this is because the body is picking up some kind of external or internal stressor and is mobilizing or activating that stress response. Now on an adrenal stress index test, you may see elevated persistently high um, cortisol all throughout the day. You may also see a low DHEA level. Now, this state of persistently high cortisol and high stress may last for a very long time. And it is supposedly is said to exhaust the adrenal glands, so to speak. Now, eventually, this hyperactive state transitions into a hypoactive state, whereby very low levels of cortisol and DHEA are being produced. Now, this is referred to as the final exhaustion phase or adrenal failure, okay? On an adrenal stress index test, measuring the salivary hormones, um, it would probably look a bit like this. And as you can see, the hormones are basically flatlined. In this state, someone is likely to feel thoroughly depleted with chronic fatigue. They might have depression, symptoms of hypothyroidism, and they may even be bed bound. If this is the case, and if some people actually have very low levels of cortisol, and there's a characteristic kind of set of stages that many people have been said to go through, then why does this actually occur? So there's a concept referred to as pregnenolone steel or cortisol steel, which is really common in natural and functional medicine circles. It's basically referring to the idea that your body is using up or is diverting all of its resources towards cortisol production and away from other hormones. It's referring to the basic building block or precursor of steroid hormones. So steroid hormones are all derived from cholesterol and cholesterol is converted into something called pregnenolone. And it's pregnenolone, which is really the parent hormone or the, the major precursor for all of the other steroid hormones. So pregnenolone can go on to form DHEA. Pregnenolone can go on to form cortisol. Okay, so it was once thought that because both DHEA and cortisol are derived from the same precursor, that the body shunts all of its pregnenolone resources towards cortisol instead of DHEA. So at the expense of other steroid hormones, and this doesn't only apply to DHEA, it can be the other sex steroids, such as estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, 
The idea is, is that if you are using up the raw material to make cortisol instead, then you're going to have less raw, ma raw material to be able to make the other protective sex steroids. Now this theory, and I want to emphasize that this was just a theory, this was based on the notion that all of the pregnenolone, which is the precursor for the rest of the hormones, all of that pregnenolone came from one single pool and could be used for whichever hormone was needed in any given moment. Therefore, when the adrenals were deplete of those raw materials, deplete of pregnenolone, we ended up with adrenal fatigue. This is the idea is that essentially when the adrenals produce so much of this stress hormone, they become depleted in these building blocks. And actually this is what made up a lot of the treatment protocols was to provide the adrenal glands with extra building blocks, so to speak, to be able to kind of replenish that. However, this theory is decades old and steroidogenesis research has actually shown since then that pregnenolone steel or cortisol steel is a myth. The synthesis of different types of steroids is governed by very complex regulatory mechanisms that occur outside of the adrenal glands. Okay, it has nothing to do with a single pregnenolone pool. In fact, there is not a single pregnenolone pool. Um, different parts of the adrenal gland, different cells of the adrenal gland actually produce different types of steroids based on um, individual need, individual context. And so if we look at the medical establishment or the conventional medical view of adrenal fatigue, it's always been poo-pooed. And many experts in endocrinology have rightly criticized this notion. Um, and this is because there is and there was very little evidence for the ideas that the adrenals became exhausted in any way. Whilst there are established medical conditions such as Addison's disease, adrenal atrophy, or in secondary adrenal insufficiency, there is no evidence that shows that the adrenal glands fail to work in someone who does not have the above conditions. In fact, the adrenal glands appear to adapt very well to persistently stressful conditions. But how can we reconcile this with the fact that there are people who experience symptoms which are described as, a, uh, as adrenal fatigue? There are people who, when you run a salivary hormone panel, their cortisol is flatlined. We can see why people or practitioners and doctors in the past have run with the idea that the adrenals become exhausted because on the test results, it would appear that way. But we've come further than that now. And so it turns out that a condition which resembles adrenal fatigue does actually exist, but the biological mechanisms have been gravely misunderstood. The experiences of people suffering with these symptoms should definitely not be ignored just because they don't have adrenal atrophy or just because they don't have Addison's disease. There are clearly things going on, but it's not because the adrenal, adrenals have become exhausted. So just to summarize, adrenal fatigue was once thought to be a condition where the adrenal glands under chronic stress or acute severe stress could no longer keep up with the burden and therefore failed to essentially produce enough stress hormones for daily life. One of the reasons with, for this was thought to be that the raw material being pregnenolone was being shunted towards cortisol and away from other, other hormones. And effectively, when that pregnenolone or that raw material was depleted, then the adrenal glands could no longer cope. However, we now know that the adrenal glands do not fail to work. They do not lack function in the case of chronic stress. In fact, they may actually improve in their function. Likewise, there is no such thing as pregnenolone steel because the raw material is produced on site in different types of cells in the adrenal glands. We know that it's not what it was once thought to be. 
However, in the next video, we are going to be looking at what actually is involved in adrenal fatigue because a condition which presents with the same symptoms does exist and it's slightly more complex. What we're going to look is at how various factors in our lifestyle, including the circadian rhythm, including blood glucose control, including emotional and other physiological stresses, can essentially um, influence the complex regulatory feedback mechanisms of the steroid hormones and can produce a condition which is essentially very similar to what is known as adrenal fatigue. So if you like this video or you found it helpful, please like my page. You can find me at www.eonutrition.co.uk. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook forward slash EO Nutrition. You can also subscribe to my page because I will be making more videos like this in the future. And if you liked it, then share it with your friends and share it on social media. So stay tuned and I will see you next time.